What is going on everybody and welcome to part 7 of the Highlight 3 tutorial series as well as the first part to the ML section of Highlight 3 tutorials. Um, I do want to stress I am here mostly just to tinker with ML. I have no promises here. It's kind of like the Python Plays GTA or the SC2 series. Uh, I don't know what the outcome is going to be. It's just a realistic example of me trying to solve a problem with ML. Uh, so in one case that was uh, pretty darn successful, in the other one it wasn't. So, <laughs> so we'll see. If you guys have ideas how to make it better or whatever, uh, feel free to uh, leave it in the comment section. Also, if anybody has an ML type of model that um, they just don't have the processing power to go through, if you want, you can submit those in the comment sections too. Uh, if I see something that looks pretty darn cool or interesting, I'll happily devote some processing power to it to see if it's uh, any good. So uh, if you want to do that, have at it. So uh, with that, let's just jump in and let me talk about what I want to do and why. So the uh, first thing I'd like to do is um, let's head over to Halite.io and talk about uh, the method I want to use. So one method that is probably going to win Halite or at least be the best type is you can parse replay files. Now, I'm not going to totally hate on that method. I plan to use that method. Um, and I think that will be the one that wins if there is a winning ML method. Um, but I, I find that method not like it's cheating, but it's kind of cheap. It's not as cool to me as something a little more raw. So that's a very supervised ML method. And I think it's way more interesting to do methods that are a little less supervised. So what I would like to do is the type of model that I always want to do, <laughs> which is a more evolutionary based method. Something that learns more from like random is just fascinating to me. I just really like that. So that's what I want to do here. And so anyways, I know people are going to want like reinforcement learning. Um, this is to an extent kind of reinforcement learning, but it's not Q learning, which is really what everyone means when they say reinforcement learning. So <laughs> anyway, uh, we will be doing deep learning. Just I want to do an evolutionary based model because I think that's really cool. Uh, if you want to do a reinforcement learning with Q learning example, and again, you don't have the processing power, let me know. Post it below and I'll happily uh, see how good it is and I'll dedicate a comparable amount of processing power to it, depending on how decent it is. So, um, and give you credit and all that. I won't submit the bot or anything, um, unless you give, want me to. Anyways, let's watch a game. Um, dude, I can't click it. They're going so fast, I can't click. <laughs> this is super frustrating. Thank you. <laughs> Man, I couldn't click on them. Okay, so uh, here's an example of a game, and here's how I, th I want to approach it in as few words as less. It's going to be a lot of talking. I'm sorry. There's a lot of concept here. Um, so anyways, so what's going on here? Okay, so in this case, each player has, what, four ships? Four or five ships. This I think green only has four. <sighs> yeah, anyway, um, each ship is its own little entity. And in the world of Halite, this game, as I've said before, is really all about navigation. But the nice thing is in Halite 2, navigation was, a, uh, you had a vector and thrust, <laughs> and all of that's like a percentage. <laughs> so that was a very challenging ML operation. Whereas in Halite 3, honestly, this is a much more basic problem to solve. That doesn't mean that competition is any less. We've got a lot of the same players from last year and the competition is just as high. Um, but the actual challenge itself and the, th the way you need to think, that part's a lot more basic. You Instead, now you got to get a lot more fancy when it comes to um, actual logic and stuff like that. So um, I'm definitely not dogging on this year's game. Um, but in terms of navigation, we only have five options, right? You can only move up, down, left, right, or not move. So that's pretty nice. And it's a grid structure. So it's very basic. It's super simple for us to feed this information to an AI uh, or an ML AI. And specifically, a convolutional neural network. It seems like a no freaking brainer <laughs> to feed it through a ConfNet. So um, the only fear I have is they're pretty small. Um, but uh, you know, we don't need a huge ConfNet. We can use a smaller ConfNet and be just fine. OK, so I want to feed it through a ConfNet. Now, there's a couple of issues we have. One is the game sizes tend to vary. A few different ways we could overcome that. We could either use padding or we could crop 
down to the smallest size, which is a 32 by 32. But if we're going to do that, um, the other option is to, instead of taking the entire game map, we can take things relative to a ship. Now, we're already going to need to do that. So consider, you know, I'm going to zoom in, but consider, you know, this is your game map. Let's say it was a smaller game map, because this one's already kind of big at 48 by 48. Which, where should this ship go? <clears throat> this ship could, should clearly go left, <laughs> right, or, or, or west um, to get that halite spot. What about, um, what about this ship? Should this ship also head to that position? Probably not. This ship should probably maybe even come down here, because over here is a little close to the enemy, because it rolls over. Well, it's actually not close to the enemy. I, I was zoomed in. I forgot about that. So maybe he should go over here, because he is closer than the enemy is to this spot, right? But regardless, each ship is relative. So each ship should have a relative viewpoint as well. So whether you wanted to use the full map or a slice of the map or whatever, you want to not have this. Let's say you're this ship. You actually want the map to look like this. And let's say we're at this ship. We want the map to look more like this, right? With your ship, the one you're considering at the present moment in the center. Unless you were going through for like a macro model of some kind to figure out, okay, where ought we send clusters of ships or something like that, which is totally valid. But what I want to do is an evolutionary based model and I want to do it on a per ship basis. So each ship, the model will run a prediction for each ship as we iterate through. Maybe later on I'll change that. But to start, that's kind of what I want to do. So then the next thing I want to do is we need to get all of the information around that ship. So we need to get this coordinate and this coordinate and this one and this one and just do that around that entire ship. So now let's talk about how I plan to do that. Because the good thing is uh, we have relative and game map coordinates built into that little Halite API for us. So doing this is really just a logical question. It's not going to require too much digging on our, on our, uh, on our end. So uh, I'll just minimize this. We'll come into here. Um, and for now, I'm going to copy paste Centibot. I'm going to call this testing grounds. Open that up. And let's just talk about how we can get those coordinates. So first of all, we just kind of want to get like a radius. I'm not going to get a circle, though. I'm going to get a square. So radius is probably the wrong word to use. So I'm going to say size. Let's say the size we want is three. So three in all directions. We'd like that square. How would we do that? Well, <clears throat> what we all we really need to do is like four I in or actually let's say four X in range of negative one times, oops, not three size. Let's make it dynamic here. Um, and then you need to go up to size. But the way range works is it starts from a point and goes up to, not two. <laughs> so we want to say size plus one. <clears throat> so if I print uh, x here, we'll see we go from negative three to positive three. So if we have a three by three, since because of zero, right, the center position, it's not going to be a three by three. And because it goes from negative to positive, it's also not a six by six. This will generate a seven by seven. Okay, so, um, so then we could just do the same thing for y. So let me just copy, come down here, paste, and then for y. And then we just print, let's for now, we'll print x, y. And this should be our relative coordinates. At least it's every combination of relative coordinates, but it, is that what we want? Well, looking at this, I, I would say no because this this was, this would like if we were to pictorially represent this, like so if we were to get the halide information and then pictorially represent it, it wouldn't look like this because of the way we're iterating. And I think, uh, just in case someone's not understanding it, what we definitely what we want, this is going to be the most beautiful stuff you have ever seen. I'm going to draw a bunch of these. You'll have to excuse the mark. I'm not going to waste too much time, but I this is something. It's always like whenever I have stuff like this, I always have to look at it visually. So here, let's say our ship. Let's just do... Uh, let's say our ship is... We'll go with green. And we're right here. This is our ship. <clears throat> so ship's at center. Then, like we want the square, so since it's a three, um, in theory, I guess, we want like this, <laughs> this is so ugly. We want this square though, but what are the coordinates at these other locations? Well, so this is up one, and I, I wanna say up, 
like up is actually negative, right? And then left would be negative as well. So at this point here, this is the same X. It seems to be a little bigger. <laughs> that was my phone, not your phone. Um, this would be same X, so at zero, but then the Y would be a negative one. And then this would be, again, same zero, but negative two. And then this would be um, zero, negative three. Now, if we continue, this would still be a negative three Y, but this would be a negative one, negative three. And this would be um, negative two, negative three. I know it's running over, but you get the idea. This would be a negative three, negative three, and so on. So we know that this top row should go in that sort of order. And then as you pop down here, X here is still negative three, but now Y is negative two. Um, and then this would be a negative two, negative two, and so on. And it should just continue with that pattern. And right now, that is not the pattern we have. We have negative three, negative three, but then it's a negative three, negative two, which is not correct, right? It's going this way, and we don't want that. We need it to go the other way, because we again, it's imperative that we c keep how it looks pictorially, because I want to use a convnet. So convnets are going to go based on patterns. And so if you have a cluster of halite, chances are we, that's where the, the ship should go. Um, but if we don't go in the correct order, a convnet might, rec might still figure it out, um, but it's less likely to. We need things to be in the right order. And in fact, it might even actually flip things. But this is exactly why, <laughs> at least for me personally, whenever I'm dealing with arrays, I, it needs to be visualized. I need to see it visually to confirm that my theory is correct. And this is like one of the very few times I ever actually write stuff down um, to test. But anyways, this is not what I expect. So what's our problem? Well, we're iterating by X's and not by Y's, right? Because if we want to iterate by Y, well, we need to, Y needs to come first. So it, we should get away with just flipping Y, X, run that again. Just go up to the very top. Okay, negative three, negative three, negative two, negative three, negative one, negative three, right? We're gonna stay at negative three until we're done with all the negative threes. Then we're gonna do all the negative twos and so on. So it's gonna go from the top down, perfect. That would generate almost an image. We need to like, since Y is our row, row is just an empty list here. Um, let's just say surroundings. Uh, and then we will not do that. <laughs> we'll do this, and then we would say row dot append x y. Um, so we append the rows, and then at the end we surroundings surroundings dot append the row, and then at the very end let's print and rather than even print surroundings, let's for our in surroundings uh, let's print r. And now let me delete this print, run that negative three, negative three, and then all the negative threes, then all the negative twos, and all that. And now, if we were to grab, let's say, halide amount at each of these locations, it would start to look something like this does, right? If we displayed halide amount by a size of, and color of the square, okay? We could definitely do that, and it would look exactly like that. Okay, so we have the rel... Hey, man, get back here. We have the relative coordinates. Now what we need to do is get this for every single ship, <laughs> okay, and probably have a larger size. So how do we get this for every single ship? Well, um, I believe it was in the regular tutorials. I'm pretty sure we covered this. You can take a current position and then add um, another position to it, even if that's a negative, so it would subtract or whatever. Um, so for example, let's just go to... Um, Let's go pythonprogramming.net, um, come down here, we'll go to highlight three, wow. I think I just spotted a bug with that ad. I'm gonna have to check that out. Let me check that out again. Oh, I gotta go back. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, that's clearly an ad in the middle. I'm gonna have to make sure I disable ads on this page. Bot tutorials after. I have this, this is like a newer tutorial page and I think that's why that's happening. Anyway, um, back to work. Uh, let's go to the final tutorial and just grab the code. We, we actually probably don't have to go this deep into the tutorial. Um, 
because we actually just we just want a skeleton here. But I'm gonna copy the whole thing anyways, and then uh, we're in Centibot, paste the whole thing, escape out of there, and then what I want to do is um, let's go to the very tippity top. Uh, we don't need ship states anymore. Uh, let's change the name as well, Centibot dash ml. Let's can we keep the command Q, keep direction order, that's fine. We might want those later. Um, position choices, we don't want that anymore. We're not going to use that logic. We, we expect our AI to figure that out now. Um, because basically what I, what I would like is the AI to control everything. Everything possible. The, the one thing that we could have AI do, but it would have to be a separate model, is when should you create more ships and when should you stop creating ships. We can, we can definitely do that. Um, but it would be a different model because this is a micro model and create ship is a macro choice. So, um, but in terms of when the ships are collecting or depositing and where they're going, anything, every the sh the AI is choosing where that ship travels. Period. So, um, for ship immediate issue. Okay, so I actually want to delete all this logic. Really everything. We'll keep one of the command queues. Um, okay, cool. So, uh, ship.move. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is let's just delete all the way in these extra. So now it just it just moves the sh it just holds still the ship basically. And then the other thing is if Len Mead, I got ships, uh, let's just only make one ship. So if it's less than one and we have the halite to do it, let's make a ship. Also, this should be a constant. Um, it's constants dot, uh, I think it's ship underscore cost. We'll find out. Um, okay, so all this does is just iterate over the ships, okay? And doesn't move them. And we will only make one ship. So the one thing I wanna do, well, we've got a few things. First of all, we, we can take this code so I don't need to do this little bit here, but I do want this bit here. So I'm going to copy this, come into here, and I'm just going to paste it in here because we, we're going to need it at some point. We just don't need it right this instant. Um, hey, man. I'm going to tab that over. Okay. And okay, now what I want to do is I want to confirm a few things because like I was saying, so like here, these are relative coordinates, but what we'd like to eventually be able to do is query the halite map itself for these values. We want to be able to ask the halite map, okay, how much halite is there? Also, is there a ship on that position? Is it our ship? Is it an enemy ship? Is there a drop-off or a depot rather? Or no, it is drop-off. I keep wanting to call them depots. Um, a shipyard or whatever. Is it our shipyard? Is it enemy ship? All that stuff. We want to be able to query for all of those things. So we can't pass to the game map negative three, negative three. That's just, a, I mean, we could, but it would be the wrong position. We actually need to pass the ship's current position plus those relative coordinates. So the way we do that, um, coming back to our code now, would be something like this. So we could say, uh, let's just do a logging.info, and then we'll use an F string. And then let's first let's print ship.position. That's the current ship position. Then let's print, um, let's do a ship dot position, position plus, um, and then a capital P position. So we have to convert it to a position type. Let's do negative three, three. So that's the current position. The current ship's position is the true position on the game map. Then we want to pass that relative position. That should just, that should correctly, um, modify the position by that relative amount, basically. So then what we're hoping is that we could also query the game map by that exact thing. So let's just make another logging.info, another F string, and then we'd like to be able to just directly query game map, and then in here you put the coordinates, the actual physical coordinates on the game map. So my expectation is that we could actually take this right here, pass that as the coordinates. That's our hope. And if this works, we'll be able to see a couple of things. One, 
it will tell us like if we as we pass through like zero my hope is that if i pass a negative position because there is no negative position on the map it just automatically rolls us my my belief is that it does uh but we need we need to confirm that before we go down the rabbit hole because pretty soon we're never going to be looking at this ever again um so we definitely want to be a hundred percent certain it's doing what we want and also we will visualize it even further uh, this is a kind of bad version of visualizing, but I will visualize it as well in something that probably like OpenCV or Matplotlib um, to make sure what's happening is what we expect. Because if because if it's not, we are, we're wasting a lot of our time. Um, so, okay, with that, let's go ahead and run it. Uh, let me go into here. Let's edit. It is centibot.py, so we don't have to change that. And then... We'll run that. Looks like it's at least running, so it should be creating log files for us. Looks like it is. Okay, they're both sent to bot, so it doesn't really matter. Um, okay, so this was the current position, negative three, three, so 25, 23. And then we come down here, and we can see we're definitely getting that map cell object. And it even tells us, it tells us that position, also tells us how much halide is there. We can also query for is there a ship there and, and all kinds of stuff like that. So so we, we can figure out all of that information that's working. The one thing we didn't check is if the ship is moving. So let's go ahead and move the ship because I need to know um, if it crosses over zero, if we're going to be able to handle that. So let's instead say ship north. So we're just going to every move, the ship just moves north. Nothing fancy. Save that. Uh, let's rerun that. And then we'll come over here. Um, click on this. Okay, so it's definitely moving. Let's just scroll down, 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 down until we get to a zero-ish point. So at this point, it actually got to a zero, and it becomes a 2542. Um, and then it becomes a 252. That's curious. Because wasn't it? No, it's a 40 by 40. Okay, that makes sense. So 2 over is, okay. And then so from 41, like 41 is out of bounds. So was 42. 42 is out of bounds. <laughs> um, so that it rolls over and becomes a 25-2. Okay, so that does, that does work. It is the way we intended. Um, okay, great. So now what we have to do is begin pulling. So rather than row append x, y, we actually want to row append game map position x y um and we want to actually append three different things so we will have a three channel convnet um it won't be rgb or bgr or color at all it'll be you know halide amount ship amount and or ship let's say ship <laughs> um and if it is if there is a ship you know the intensity could be how much halide is on that ship um or uh shipyard right or drop off Okay, um, and we could even have is a ship at the drop or at the shipyard, um, which would be curious. Actually, we would already know that from the previous one. So yeah, so it would just be halide amount ship shipyard, um, and if it's an enemy ship, uh, we could just say negative one times that enemy ship's halide amount. If it's an enemy shipyard, negative one times that shipyard. Done. <laughs> So um, I think I'll stop it here and uh, continue in the next one. We'll do that. We'll visualize it and maybe even start building maybe some random data. I'm not really sure how far we'll get. I'm going to try to keep these not too, too long, but also not too short. Um, but yeah, if you guys have suggestions, whatever, uh, feel free to leave them below. Um, again, if you if you make one uh, or you've got a different idea and you want someone to test it out with some some honking processing power um let me know in the comments if you want me to uh run it and see how far we can get i'm totally willing to do that also quick shout out to my most recent channel members uh uday dave john walton and bing lee thank you guys very much for your support it allows me to do stuff uh, just like this uh, which is a super fun and it's an awesome job so i really appreciate you guys' support um so anyways uh that's it for now like I said, next video we'll visualize, make sure what we're going to collect is exactly right. Um, we'll make sure it looks like something a convnet could actually learn from. Um, then we'll start building data. And, and all we're going to do is build data off of random moves. 
and then we can slice away the best you know games like um, we could go based on who won or something else um, slice away those and then train a model and then iteratively just keep doing that and see just see how far we can get <laughs> i have a suspicion it won't be super far but i'm really curious to see how far so anyways uh that's what we're going to be doing in the next tutorial um i will see you guys there